G'day and welcome to Barney's Daily Devotionals. We're looking at 2 Corinthians over the next little while. And we've seen so far the importance of integrity and sincerity in our service of the Lord Jesus. It's super important for uh, ministers. It's super important for Christians who uh, want to have integrity and sincerity and serve God, that we are people of our word and that we live out our faith. And we've seen something of uh, why that is so key to our ministry to each other, our service of God in general, and our uh, witness to the world. But how do you do that? What does it mean to have integrity and sincerity? Well, in the sincerity uh, part of the equation, the integrity is about living consistency. Sincerity is meaning what you say. And the question that is going to be raised for us today is, are you and am I a person of our word? Does when we make a commitment, do we follow through on it? Is that something that we value and cherish? And what happens if circumstances come up that we can't keep our word? Does that mean we're not sincere, that we're unfaithful? Uh, or are there certain circumstances under which uh, actually, that's fair enough, and there's uh, a good explanation for it, and it doesn't really question our integrity and sincerity. The reason it comes up is Paul had made a commitment to the Corinthian church, and as we're going to hear today, he had failed to follow through on it, and so that had caused some to question his integrity and his sincerity. He's a man who doesn't mean what he says, so that what do we believe about the gospel that he preached? We trusted him that these things were true, but he is a man who appears because of a change of travel plans to be insincere. And so we're going to pray and get into God's word. Father, thank you for your love. And so please teach us the, the critical importance and value of sincerity, how we might be truthful people in and hold our commitments and when uh, there are times and uh, occasions where uh, to not follow through is the better course of action, help us to navigate this uh, and help us to love you and be great servants of the Lord Jesus uh, as we study your word and reflect on our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're in 2 Corinthians and we continue on in chapter 2 and we pick it up in verse 15. He's just talked about his uh, his integrity and sincerity that they could see uh, when he was with them. Anyway, verse 15, because I was confident of this, I wanted to visit you first so that you might benefit twice. I wanted to visit you on my way to Macedonia and to come back to you from Macedonia and then have you send me on my way to Judea. Was I fickle when I intended to do this, or do I make my plans in a worldly manner so that in the same breath I say both yes, yes, and no, no? But as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it's always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the Amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. I call God as my witness and I stake my life on it that it was in order to spare you that I did not return to Corinth. Not that we lord it over your faith, but we work with you for your joy because it is by faith you stand firm. So I made up my mind that I would not make another painful visit to you. For if I grieve, who is left to make me glad but you whom I have grieved? I wrote as I did so that when I came, I would not be distressed by those who should have made me rejoice. I had confidence in all of you that you would share all of you in my joy. For I wrote you out of great distress and anguish of heart and with many tears, not to grieve you, but to let you know the depth of my love for you. And so here's the situation. Paul is not in Corinth. Uh, he is overseas. Uh, he's over, uh, presumably he's gone round from Macedonia into Achaia and uh, he's on his visit, uh, come from his visit with the uh, Ephesian elders and so on that you can read about in Acts around about chapter 20. 
and uh, he had planned to uh, and make two stops, as he says. And uh, if you go back to 1 Corinthians, you can read something of his travel plans in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, that he's intending to visit them. But he'd had this agreement with them that he would come twice uh, so that they might be encouraged. But he has failed to make the first stop at Corinth. Uh, Corinth is in Greece, Macedonia is up and around to the north. Uh, at, at various stages of history, it was part of the, the national Greece, but at other times it was a separate state, separate country. Uh, and so um, uh, you might remember in Acts, Paul had a vision of the man from Macedonia who was starving. Uh, and so he went to bring the gospel to to uh, supply their needs, but also uh, to see what it was that was happening with the famine there. And we're going to read about the Macedonians and their response to the gospel, but also their response to uh, other people in need later on in this very letter. And so he's been on this thing, but he's changed his mind. He decided not to make the first stop. And so the question has come up amongst the congregation. Well, Paul, he told us he would come these two times and he has failed to do it. We know where he is, that he's not, he's gone further than we, than he said. And so here is a man who has failed in his word. And so if he can't keep his promises and his travel plans to us, how can he be trusted? He says he's a man of integrity and sincerity, but sincerity involves following through on your plans and your word. And and Paul wants to assure them that it wasn't a worldly insincerity that caused him to change his mind, but actually a concern for them. And then he wants to talk to them about why it's so important that the sincerity is uh, the case in Christian ministry, and that you should be a person of your word if you're a follower of the Lord Jesus, and especially uh, as a servant involved in any kind of uh, pastoral ministry, teaching, leading, uh, you know, any kind of leadership of church. Sincerity is vital. So we know why they've questioned his sincerity, because of his change of travel plans but they don't understand the motive of them. It wasn't that he couldn't have come. It wasn't he was prevented. He wasn't you know, sick or injured or anything like that. And so he explains why he was, and, he's, and, and actually it was to do with his relationship with them. One, if you remember the history of it, of their relationship, Paul had planted the church. He'd gone to Corinth. He'd evangelized the city and a church that came into existence. He'd stayed there a number of years. He had moved on to do other missionary work and other leaders had come. And in the letter of 1 Corinthians, they had written to Paul to say, we're so torn up and confused and we don't know how to move forward. And there's different factions at church. And he'd written the stinging letter of 1 Corinthians uh, to them to to answer their questions, to clarify. They were divided over their leadership. They were divided over sexuality. They were divided over spiritual gifts. They were divided over so many things. What do we do with our old religious practices? Can we keep doing them and hanging out down at the temples? And so it had been a very difficult letter. And in the middle of it, actually, he's, uh, he addresses one specific uh, man in the congregation who they really need to kick out of church. He's uh, sin has been so vile and they've been and their factions that are so proud of his sexual freedom and conquests uh, and he's saying this is horrible what's happening it's going to destroy your church so for his sake for the church's sake you need to remove him and so it had been a very painful letter that he's talking about a severe letter uh, one that came down on them hard in a number of ways and that really did put some of the factions in their place if you read through one corinthians just in one sitting you can see it's kind of this devastating thing as he's addressing all these different issues but in doing that he's realized actually he's got this difficult relationship with these people who he loves dearly they've come to christ through his ministry to them they are dear brothers and sisters to him and he says look the reason i have changed my mind is because I realized that that would actually cause more devastation in our relationship. I resolved not to make another painful visit to you, both for my sake and for your sake, because 
we're at war and this fight is on and uh, people are desperately unhappy and yes christians need to resolve their issues and they find forgiveness and reconciliation and i may say in fact that's partly what this letter is about it's talking about paul's ministry and and how we should be dealing with each other and how it is that uh, we go on and honor god uh and so he's going to come through to issues like that um but he decided that the moment was not right to make this visit and so he's planning to change and he communicated that plan it's not that they're unaware that he just stayed away and didn't inform them they 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 know completely well that he's decided not to visit presumably that's because he has sent messengers i mean in one corinthians he said he's going to send uh timothy back uh to them and so um you know there are messages going back and forth and obviously they're they're bringing uh letters and things to paul along his correspondence there's there's people going back and forward so it's not that he's just said he's coming and then done a runner uh, a lot of times we try and say face with each other by saying yeah yeah of course i'll come or at least i'm a strong maybe and then never actually intending to go and that's what paul would describe as promising in a worldly manner that's being fickle and he talks about how horrible that is he says was i fickle when i um sent you uh, uh so was i fickle when i intended to do this I don't want to make my plans in a worldly manner. So in one breath, I say both yes, yes, and no, no. That's the Facebook maybe that we tick in life now, isn't it? Uh, and it shows a lack of sincerity, a lack of integrity that we're kind of, we, we haven't made up our mind and we just want people to be happy with us. And so we'll say whatever we think uh, is going to make them happy. And Paul says that's that's a terrible way to be. And it really, really matters that we're sincere. But sincerity doesn't necessarily mean that we have to dot every I and cross every T exactly the way, particularly if it's going to cause further problems. But in those cases, what you should do is uh, acknowledge that, apologize for it, explain it as he does here, that it's not fickleness and not, you know, I wasn't just making it up and saying what would make people happy with me for a while. Now, why does it matter that Paul... Um, is sincere, that even though he has not followed through on his plans, well, he says the issue is that it reflects on God. God is faithful. God always keeps his promises. And God doesn't make yes, no plans. He decides what he's going to do. Even before he's created the world, through the prophets, he sends word about what he will do hundreds of years before he does them. But he will always fulfill them. And he says, God is always faithful, always sincere, and every promise of God is a yes in Jesus Christ, which is wonderful news. That's the gospel, isn't it? All the promises right through from the Old Testament of a sacrifice of sins is coming, a Messiah coming, a, a redemption, of resurrection even, a yes in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it really matters that his disciples and his uh, servants who go to spread that gospel of the fulfillment of that promise are faithful in the way they conduct themselves and speak and make promises because God keeps his promises. It really matters if his people keep their promises. That doesn't mean we have to be slaves to th foolish promises that we've made in the past. Uh, and there are times when we need to say, well, actually, that would be a bad course of action for God, for the gospel, for the people involved, for ourselves, that we're going to work it out and we're going to make good on it. And that's what Paul is doing here. He's not flipping and flopping. He's not, yeah, maybe, or, oh, yeah, well, that sounds like a good idea at the time, but now nah, I've got a better idea. I've got a better party I got invited to. That would be insincere. No, this is a considered reason that he didn't come, that he has to explain. He's not lying about it. And it's all to do with this relationship. What is going to be most helpful? He wanted to help them move forward after the 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 rupture in their relationship. They'd already been divided into who they followed. Some follow Paul, some follow Apollos, some follow Cephas. You can go back and read that in 1 Corinthians. And so here he's saying, I was actually trying to help by changing my plans. Not that I'm fickle, not that I'm wishy-washy, uh, but I want to be sincere and I always want to live the best. And so I have integrity and sincerity at the same time. 
it's integrity and sincerity in the way I deal with people and the way I deal with you. And it's a great model for us to learn in ministry that this is vitally important, that we shouldn't be just making stuff up and going, yeah, yeah, whatever, not thinking through it, but we should think deeply about how uh, our promises, what we're promising, that we fulfill them, that if we can't or there's a better thing to be doing, that we explain it and uh, so that we're not just crushing people and disappointing them. And all of this is so important because it reflects on the faithfulness of our great God, the one who makes promises and keeps them in the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's stop and pray that we might have this integrity in all that we do, that we'd be thoughtful about what we say, the promises and the plans that we make, that we might honour God and be thinking what is going to best serve his glory, uh, the joy of the people that we are in relationship to and the furtherance of the gospel. Father, please teach us that sincerity really matters and to be absolutely thoughtful about what we say, the plans we make, that we might glorify you in everything, that we might be a benefit to those around. Help us not to be fickle and wishy-washy and to uh, you know, just be t saying maybe all the time or saying yes to some and no to others um, because we can't make up our minds and we want people to like us. Help us to be absolutely committed to your gospel going forward, to loving people and to glorifying you in everything we do and say thank you that you are a faithful God. In the Lord Jesus, you have fulfilled every promise that you have made. And so you've called us to be your children. And so help us to live in a way that reflects you in our lives. A God who is faithful. In Jesus' name we pray and for his glory. Amen. God bless everyone. Catch you for another devotion tomorrow. Bye.